Ade Anoma, <coughs> brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. It's been a few years since I came here. Buddha Dhamma Mandala Society. See, now it's quite beautiful. Huh? Our renovation work has been done. Tonight, I have to give a talk on how to develop the seven Bojangas. This is a very important topic. And most of the suttas and the Bojangas are found in the Sangyutta Nikaya, chapter 46, called the Bojanga Sangyutta. Bojanga is translated as factors of enlightenment or factors of bodhi or bodhi factors. In the Sutta uh, 46.8, it is said, those who have undertaken the seven Bojanga have undertaken the Aryan path leading to the complete destruction of suffering. So if you practice the seven Bojangas, this is the Aryan path to the complete destruction of suffering. But this is also a set of the Aryan Eightfold Path. Aryan Eightfold Path consists of eight factors which you, which if you develop will also end with complete destruction of suffering. So these two are quite related, the Seven Bojanga and the Aryan Eightfold Path. The difference is on the stress, on the different factors. In the Sutta 46.3, it is described how to practice the Bojanga. It is said that first you must visit or draw close to an Arya or a Sapurisa. An Arya is one of the eight Aryans. The eight Aryans have attained stages of enlightenment. Uh, First path, first fruit, second path, second fruit, third path, third fruit, and fourth path, fourth fruit. The fourth fruit, Arya, is a fully enlightened being. And that is the Samasambuddha, the Buddha who wants to teach the whole world the Dhamma. And then it also includes the Pacheka Buddha. Uh, we find from the suttas, we can say uh, that 99.99% of Buddhas are Pacheka Buddhas. Sometimes, like in the Isigili Sutta, the Majjhima Nikaya, the Buddha said, there was a time outside Rajagaha, this hill called Isigili Hill, there were 500 Pacheka Buddhas there, but none of them wanted to teach. But of course, it's not that they cannot teach. Yes, they are as knowledgeable as any other Buddha, including the Samasam Buddha. Only thing they are not willing to teach. But I guess if you went individually to any one of them and asked them the Dhamma, they would explain to you. So you can find many Pachika Buddhas at one time. But Samasam Buddha is very difficult to find. The Buddha said one night he did not sleep. He spent the whole night contemplating the past. He contemplated contemplated 91 world cycles and he saw that there were, there were only six Samasambuddhas in a long period of time, 91 world cycles, only six Samasambuddhas willing to teach the Dhamma. But then later books talk about 24 Buddhas, 28 Buddhas, 88 Buddhas in the Mahayana. All those are later. In the suttas, the Buddha only mentioned six Samasam Buddhas. But he mentioned the Buddhas of other Buddhas la, who are Pacheka Buddhas. <clears throat> so first, you have to draw near an Arya or a Sapurisa. Uh, a Sapurisa is a person who knows the Saddhamma. Saddhamma is the true Dhamma. Sapurisa is a true man, a true man who knows the true Dhamma. A Sapurisa is also uh, an Arya. So when you draw near this uh, 
Arya Sapurisa, other suttas say you should examine him. Examine him to make sure that he is possibly an Arya. And how do you do so? You see whether he keeps his sila or a conduct. You see whether he has a calm personality. If he's uh, calm, then he has samadhi. He's not a monkey mind, a scatterbrain. And then uh, when you talk to him, you can know whether he has wisdom or not. Yeah. So if he has these three things, sila, samadhi, panya, this is the basically also the Aryan Eightfold Path. Then you can have some trust in him. And then the sutta says you also see whether there is greed, hatred, and delusion in him. If he does not have greed, delay, del, greed, hatred, and delusion in him, then also uh, it's possible that he's an Arya. Then you show respect. After you show respect, then he is inclined to teach you. So when he teaches you the Dhamma, it should be the true Dhamma. And then after you listen to the true Dhamma, you should remember that Dhamma and think it over. During the Buddha's time, there were no books, not like nowadays. Eh? Uh, so, they, when they hear the Dhamma, they have to remember it because they might only hear it once. Yeah. Uh, so, if they are not sure, maybe they have to ask the monk again to repeat. Eh? Then after that, during the Buddha's time, eh, they had to memorize memorize the suttas. They don't memorize, it goes in one ear and goes out the other ear, you would have forgotten about it. So in the Buddha's days, eh, the Buddha's uh, monk disciples, nun disciples, laymen, lay women, all had to spend a lot of time memorizing the suttas. But nowadays, if we listen to the SD card or the cassette, eh, the uh, CDs, eh, no more cassette, <laughs> Then uh, we listen to it every day. La. Every day you listen to it, uh, at least it uh, sticks in the mind. If you don't listen to it every day, uh, very soon you forget. Yeah. Uh, so, the Buddha said, whenever monks, a monk thus recollects the Dhamma, thinks it over, on that occasion, the enlightenment factor of sati is aroused by the monk. On that occasion, the monk develops the enlightenment factor of sati. On that occasion, the enlightenment factor of sati comes to fulfillment by development in the monk. So you see, this is the first bojanga. We must have the opportunity to listen to the sat dhamma, the true dhamma. And then you must remember it. And you must think it over. Uh, that is how you practice sati. Now, what is a dhamma? What is a true dhamma? Because nowadays our dhamma is very roja. So we have to be clever. We have to be smart nowadays. Uh, everything we do have to be smart. So the Buddha said uh, that his true Dhamma will last 500 years. Later books, they talk about 5,000 years. But in the suttas, the Buddha said his true Dhamma will last 500 years. Not that after 500 years, you don't have the true Dhamma. But what the Buddha meant was, after 500 years, false Dhamma will appear. And the Buddha mentioned this in several suttas. In the Kasapa Sangyutta, chapter 16, I think, of the Sangyutta Nikaya, 16.13, the Buddha said, The true Dhamma will not disappear as long as the false Dhamma has not emerged. But when the false Dhamma arises, the Buddha said, then the true Dhamma will disappear. And the Buddha said, it is the foolish people here who caused the false Dhamma to appear. He was talking to the monks, to the Sangha. 
what he meant was it is the Sangha, it is the monks themselves uh, who create the false Dhamma in the future. Uh, future monks will create the false Dhamma. And that will slowly cause the two Dhamma to disappear. Also, the Buddha mentioned in another sutta in the Sangyutta Nikaya 20.7, Upama Sangyutta, the Buddha said uh, that in the future the false Dhamma will appear and then uh, people will find it difficult to distinguish between the true Dhamma and the false Dhamma. And because people find it difficult to distinguish, uh, then people will not have that interest in the Dhamma. The Buddha also gave a simile of false gold. The Buddha said nowadays there is no false gold. Everybody wants to buy gold. But one day false gold will appear. And when false gold appears, people find it difficult to distinguish between true gold and false gold. And then people will be alarmed. They are not buying. Yeah? Mm. So... Since the Buddha said the true Dhamma will last 500 years, uh, we have to know what was the true Dhamma within that 500 years. And luckily, we have Emperor Asoka. Emperor Asoka lived about 250 years after the Buddha's passing away. And he had so much faith in the Buddha that he wanted the people to know the Buddha's teachings. So he got uh, the words of the Buddha carved on stone pillars and he erected these stone pillars on the roadside for people to read. And now after over 2,000 years, uh, archaeologists have dug up these stone pillars uh, and they find during Emperor Asoka's time, the Dhamma was only five Nikayas, Diga Nikaya, long discourses of the Buddha consisting of 34 suttas, long suttas. Majima Nikaya, consisting of 152 medium-length discourses. Sangyutta Nikaya, over 2,000 short discourses, uh, topically topically um, arranged. And then Anguttara Nikaya, over 2,000 suttas, numerically arranged. And then the last one was the Kudaka Nikaya. Kudaka means minor, smaller collection. But nowadays, uh, they have added, they have kept adding books to it, so has, it has become a major collection. Uh, in uh, Thailand and Sri Lanka, there are 15 books in the Kudaka Nikaya. But in the Burmese tradition, in 1956, uh, they had a Sangha council and they added three more books inside there. And all the monks knew that those three books were not the words of the Buddha. And yet they put those books there. Uh, so it shows uh, how people keep adding the books. So you investigate the books in the Kudaka Nikaya, you find only six uh, can truly be accepted uh, because it is it conforms to the earlier four Nikayas. Uh. These six books are the Dhammapada, Udana, Itivuttaka, Sutta Nipata, Theragata, Therigata. Uh, only these six books are reliable. Uh, so that is the true Dhamma, the five Nikayas, earliest five Nikayas of the Buddha. Then we find exactly 500 years after the Buddha's passing away, uh, we have later books emerging like the Mahayana Sutras and the Abhidhamma and commentaries. 900 years after the Buddha's passing away, the Visuddhi Maga appeared. Nowadays, some monks teach according to the Visuddhi Maga. You find in these later books uh, that they have some Dhamma, that is why people are attracted to it. But at the same time, they add a little Adama. And that little Adama, they say things that the Buddha did not say. For example, in Mahayana Sutras, they talk about the seventh and the eighth consciousness. But in the early Buddha's discourses, he only talked about six consciousness. So they created the seventh and the eighth consciousness in Mahayana. 
And then similarly with the Abhidhamma, in Theravada, we have the seven books of the Abhidhamma. The first three or four is okay, la. it conforms to the early suttas. But the later, uh, the last three books, uh, they see a lot of things that the Buddha did not say. Talk about Kalapas, Javana, Bhavanga, Patisandhi, Chitta, Chutti, Chitta, and all these things uh, that the Buddha did not say. But then, these people who wrote these later books, uh, saying a lot of things that the Buddha did not, did not say, uh, they did not study the words of the Buddha in the five Nikayas enough. If they had studied enough, uh, they would know in the Diga Nikaya Sutta 29, the Buddha said uh, his teachings of the holy life uh, are perfect and complete. If the Buddha's teachings uh, are perfect and complete, it means you cannot make it more perfect. You cannot make it more complete. The Buddha also said uh, that if you think you want to add to his words, uh, you don't see his Dhamma. If you don't see his Dhamma, you don't have right view. You're not an Arya. Only when you see the Dhamma, vision of the Dhamma, which is Dhamma Chaku, Fa Yen. Only if you see the Dhamma, understand the Dhamma, you have right view. So all the people who wrote the later books, uh, they, they are not Arya, according to the Buddha. If they appreciated the suttas of the Buddha, they would know that it's more than enough. Since the Buddha said uh, that his teachings are perfect and complete, uh, it also means uh, that he is the top class Buddha. You cannot find another Buddha uh, whose teachings are superior to our Buddha Gautama. Because his teachings are perfect and complete. Uh. Mm. At the most, uh, the best other Buddha you can find can only equal our Buddha Gautama. Cannot be better than our Buddha Gautama. And our Buddha Gautama is not only the best uh, in the teaching and wisdom, he's also one of the greatest in psychic powers. In one of the suttas, the Buddha went to the Brahma heavens to teach Mahabrahma. Mahabrahma in the Rupa Loka and the Rupa realm, form realm uh, has great psychic powers. Some of these Mahabrahma, their light, uh, can shine up to a hundred thousand worlds so far. So when the Buddha came to teach him, he was not impressed by the Buddha. But then the Buddha showed him psychic powers. He was astounded. And he said something which was also... Uh, he said, he has never seen another ascetic whose psychic powers are so great like this Samana Gotama. Buddha used to be called Samana Gotama. Mahabrahma has a long life. Such a long life uh, that he has seen many, many ascetics with psychic powers fly up to the Brahma heaven and other devas also. But he had never seen anybody uh, with such great psychic powers as our Buddha, Gautama. So, uh, a lot of people uh, don't appreciate uh, that we have one of the best Buddhas ever available. Don't appreciate his teachings, his suttas. Like in the Mahayana, they say our Pali Suttas are Xiao Cheng, small vehicle, Pariya. They are great. And similarly, for those who praise the Abhidhamma, they say the Abhidhamma is the highest teaching. Sutras, suttas are inferior, so they don't want to spend time studying the Suttas. It's a great shame because they never investigated properly. So that is the first Bojanga, Sati Bojanga. Then uh, coming to the second Bojanga, which is Dhamma Vichaya, investigation of the Dhamma. The Buddha said, uh, dwelling thus mindfully, he investigates that Dhamma with wisdom, examines it, makes a discrimination of it, Whenever monks, a monk dwelling thus mindfully, investigates that Dhamma with wisdom, examines it, makes a discrimination of it, on that occasion, the enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma, Dhamma Vichaya, is aroused by the monk. On that occasion, the monk develops the enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma. 
On that occasion, the enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma comes to fulfillment by development in the monk. So this is how you practice the second Bojanga. After you have learned the Dhamma, you must investigate it with wisdom, examine it carefully. Mm. Now, I will explain this too. Eh? Sati, eh? if you look up the word Sati in the Pali dictionary, you find it comes from a word which means to remember. The basic meaning of Sati is, is to remember, to recollect. Uh, in nine suttas, Sati, is, the Buddha defines Sati in this way. A person has Sati, eh? when he remembers what he said and he did a long time ago. So we translate sati as mindfulness, but it has to do with remembering. So when we meditate, we train our mind to be mindful. Yeah, And if you meditate correctly, according to the suttas, you should attain the four jhanas because uh, sama samadhi, uh, right concentration, is defined as the four jhanas. Uh, in, in the Aryan Eightfold Path, uh, samasati, right, Mindfulness uh, is defined as contemplating body, feelings, mind, and Dhamma. Uh, so, the meaning of Samasati uh, is to remember uh, to put your mind on four things, to contemplate four things. Because if you don't remember, uh, our mind will start going out to the six senses, to see, to hear, smell, taste, touch, and think. So, it is the natural tendency of the mind uh, to pay attention to the six sense bases. We like to be entertained by the things of the world. Uh, uh, to watch the TV, internet, to hear rock music, etc. So, if we pay attention to the objects of the six senses, uh, it's not going to give us wisdom. For example, you watch football, Premier League football. Wow, very exciting. Put all your attention there. Very mindful. But does it give you wisdom? No. So that's why we have to remember to pull our attention from the things of the world to the four objects. The Buddha said uh, the objects of the six senses uh, is Mara's bait. Buddha said uh, the Mara is like a fisherman. He put out six baits, uh, six hook baits, uh, baited hooks. Uh. So the fish is hungry, uh, it comes to eat the bait. Uh get caught. Uh, in the same way, uh, this uh, Satan uh, Mara is tempting us uh, with beautiful sights, nice sounds, uh, fragrant smells, good food, etc. Uh, so the Buddha said, uh, it's very dangerous uh, to go out to the six sense objects. Now, of the four Objects of Sati, eh? body, feelings, mind, and Dhamma. There are some books that translate Dhamma as phenomena or mind objects. But when we see suttas like this Bojanga, Sati Bojanga, then we know eh? Dhamma does not refer to mind objects. Dhamma refers to the Buddha's teachings. Because of the four objects of Sati, the most important is Dhamma. Why is Dhamma most important? Because in the Anguttara Nikaya 5.26, it is said that there are five occasions of liberation, five occasions when a person becomes an Arahant. The first one is listening to the Dhamma. When he listens to the Dhamma and he understands, then he attains enlightenment. For example, when the Buddha was gathering disciples, he went to these jatilas because they cultivated the four jhanas. After he managed to convert them, uh, after several weeks, uh, 
Then they became his monk disciples. The Buddha preached to them the Aditya Pariyaya Sutta, the fire discourse, because they like to pray to fire. Hearing just one discourse, uh, they, uh, all of them attain arahanthood. Mm. So, because their minds were very clear. Uh, mm. So, this is the most common one, uh, listening to the Dhamma. The second one is teaching the Dhamma. When somebody is teaching the Dhamma, he has to think and understand the Dhamma before he can teach. Uh, so, when he's teaching and he understands the Dhamma, there's a second time he becomes enlightened. A person becomes enlightened. The third one is when he repeats the Dhamma. During the Buddha's days, uh, I said they have to repeat the Dhamma. As they repeat the Dhamma in their own language, uh, they understand. Uh, and the more times they repeat, uh, the more times they, they, the better they understand. It's just like nowadays, if you listen to the Dhamma talks uh, on the SD card or whatever, if you listen once, uh, you catch certain points. The second time you listen, you catch more points. The third time you listen, you catch even more points. And you're wondering why you didn't notice those points earlier. Because you didn't listen so many times. So the more times we listen, the more we understand. That is the third occasion. The fourth occasion, when he's reflecting on the Dhamma. After you have heard the Dhamma, you ref when you have time, you reflect on it, whether it's true or not. But they can see it in everyday life. And the fifth occasion is when a person is meditating. So out of the five occasions uh, when a person becomes enlightened, four of them have to do with Dhamma. And this Dhamma refers to the Buddha's teachings, not to mind objects. So that is Dhamma. By the way, although these five occasions are mentioned as occasions of liberation, uh, I believe they are also occasions uh, for attaining the various paths and the fruits. For example, to get the lowest path, the first path, uh, you have to listen to the Dhamma and understand. And then when you understand, you see the Dhamma means you have right view. Once you have right view, uh, you have entered the stream, become an Arya. And then the sutta say uh, that when you attain the path, uh, uh, the same lifetime, uh, it will, the, the wisdom will mature, uh, it will turn to fruit uh, before you die. Not immediately. Abhidhamma says immediately. But sutta say uh, after some time. Because sutta say uh, that uh, you can make offerings, uh, dana, to a path attainer, to a fruit attainer. But if a person attains the path and immediately it becomes the fruit, nah, before you can say hello, he already turned to fruit. So how to make offering to a path attainer? Yeah. Uh, so that's why you find, uh, if, you, uh, if you know the suttas well, you can see the contradictions between the later books and the earlier suttas. In the Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 43, uh, it is said that there are two conditions for right view. Once you get right view, uh, it means you have understood the Dhamma, attained the Dhamma Chaku, vision of the Dhamma, and that means you have attained the stream entry. Stream entry is also the first path, the lowest area. So in Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 43, uh, they said there are two conditions for right view. One is the voice of another, the second is focused attention. The voice of another means uh, the voice of another person teaching you the true Dhamma. Uh, either the suttas themselves or teachings based on the early suttas. Uh, so this only is mentioned only two conditions, the two basic conditions necessary for attaining stream entry. Uh, is the voice of another teaching you the true Dhamma. And then when you listen, you must focus attention. Why is focus attention important? Uh, it's explained in Sutta 46.38. The Buddha said, When monks, a noble disciple listens to the Dhamma with eager ears, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, directing his whole mind to it. On that occasion, the five hindrances are not present in him. On that occasion, the seven bojanga go to fulfillment by development. 
So you see, when you listen to the Dhamma with eager ears, uh, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, directing the whole mind to it, uh, at that time the five hindrances are absent. The five hindrances are five things uh, that obstruct wisdom, that make us blind, uh, that uh, hinder right view. If you have the high five hindrances blocking you, uh, you cannot attain stream entry. But the Buddha says, uh, if you, when you listen to the Dhamma, you pay full attention, attending to it as a matter of vital concern, directing your whole mind to it. Uh, at that time, the five hindrances fall to a low level and they don't obstruct you. At that time, you can understand. And he even says that the seven Bojanga go to fulfillment. That means... You can, the conditions are right for you to attain uh, this uh, right view, stream entry. La. Uh, that's why it's important when you listen to the Dhamma to pay full attention. So we find uh, that in the suttas, many people came to listen to the Dhamma for the first time. And then they attain stream entry. Afterwards, I will mention, uh, it's not that difficult as some people think. Uh, but however, there are some people, when they listen to it the first time or the second time, they don't attain. Uh, they are not so intelligent. Uh, if you are very intelligent, you catch it immediately. Uh, uh, it's like cracking a joke. Uh, somebody cracks a subtle joke. Uh, some people are very sharp. Immediately, they ha, ha, ha. And then uh, the, the, the second type of person, uh, he has to think it over for some time. Uh, maybe later uh, he will ha ha ha. Then another person is scratching his head. Uh, at night when he's about to go to sleep, uh, suddenly he ca catch the point. Uh, he will ha 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 and then <laughs> fall asleep happily. <laughs> the fourth type of person, uh, the next day or so, he scratches his head also cannot understand. <laughs> So, it's the same with people who listen to the Dhamma. There are some people, they listen uh, very fast, they catch and attain stream entry. Second time, they have to take some time, keep on listening. Maybe after they finish listening to the five Nikayas, uh, then they get an uh, overall picture uh, and they attain right view, stream entry. The third time, they have to listen several times, uh, the five Nikayas. Then after a few years, uh, of uh, patient labor, then he understands that he's right. The fourth time uh, is very blur blur. So <laughs> he listens and cannot penetrate. Uh, so after a while, he gives up no more interest. So because of that, uh, the Buddha said, uh, some people have to cultivate the second bojanga. Second bojanga is investigation of the Dhamma. Take more time to investigate the Dhamma. But uh, sooner or later, uh, you will understand. Uh, if you have the interest, uh, you will listen to the Dhamma, the five Nikayas, every day. Why do we have to investigate the Dhamma? Uh, the Buddha explained uh, in Sutta 56.18. The Buddha said in the four Aryan truths, uh, in other words, in the Dhamma, uh, there are innumerable nuances innumerable details, innumerable implications. In other words, uh, there are different shades of meaning uh, in the in the Dhamma when you when you when you study the Dhamma. Many details uh, and many hidden meanings uh, which you don't catch immediately. Uh. You need to take time to constantly reflect on it uh, and keep on listening uh, and then uh, the effort uh, will be rewarded. Uh. There is, uh, in the Swatapati Sangyutta, uh, it talks about four conditions of stream entry. Earlier, we heard two conditions, but now this one says four conditions. It's called Swatapati Yangani. Uh, four conditions for stream entry. Uh, the first one is association with the Sapurisa, association, uh, good, uh, associating with the true man. Second is listening to the true Dhamma. The third one is focused attention. The fourth one is Dhamma nu Dhamma Pati Pati, practice of the Dhamma in accordance with the Dhamma. That means as you listen to the Dhamma and as you understand, 
you practice what you can. Uh, yeah. But of course, for the lower stage, uh, the most important uh, is to keep on listening to the Dhamma based on the four nika- the five Nikayas. Keep on listening every day uh, and investigate it, think about it, reflect on it, etc. That is the most important work you have to do. Uh, then after some time, you will understand.